Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, bootlickers, shills, nuts, slicers, peasants, vassals, minions, YouTubers, Ukrainians. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. Today I want to talk about Ukraine and uh, all this talk about a Russian invasion. Uh, some uh, uh, unconfirmed, unproven uh, uh, idea that there's a thousand Russian troops inside of uh, Ukraine. And they just kind of all of a sudden showed up someplace. And uh, the basic question for me is, why would anyone believe anything the Kiev government says anymore? Um, everything that they've produced, everything that they've said has been a lie. What about this uh, supposed destroyed uh, Russian convoy a week ago? That was uh, brought up and ballyhooed in all the press and then dropped. Uh, and the MH17 plane uh, crash flight uh, shoot down uh, is not in the news anymore, so they moved from one crisis to the next. And, uh, and of course, Poroshenko and uh, the Kiev government have been beating the war drums and trying to somehow uh, draw more of a, a drama to this situation. And, uh, and then on top of that, of course, this uh, really uh, incredibly brutal and ridiculous assault by the Kiev government on these uh, eastern provinces. And as it turns out, um, it, it looks like uh, the, the Kiev government is actually losing in the field uh, to these separatists, these militants, these rebels in these eastern provinces. So those are the basic two themes of this video, I guess, is why would anybody believe anything the Kiev government says? And then the fact that the Kiev government seems to be losing in the field. And uh, so we have this rebel offensive now, uh, the uh, reports by Kiev that they are winning in the field are apparently extremely exaggerated and we find uh, multiple Ukraine uh, military units, supposed National Guard surrounded. And uh, we also have the uh, militant forces uh, moving south uh, in, in the uh, eastern Ukraine region and spreading out the front uh, against the uh, Kiev government. And uh, there, there's no doubt that there's a Russian paramilitary and, uh, and uh, even some quasi-Russian troops uh, uh, fighting in, in eastern Ukraine. And we, we also have documented cases of uh, foreign volunteers, uh, notably some French volunteers. I'll attach a video below about that. And we know that a certain amount of Russian equipment uh, is going into the Ukraine. But we, we also have to remember that uh, in, to a certain degree, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, actual Russian government involvement to, to the degree that uh, a lot of uh, that Ukraine region is Russian. They are Russian people. There's uh, Russian people who commute from Russia back and forth in, to Ukraine and Russia. And uh, this uh, relationship is a, is a long one where, of course, Ukraine even used to be part of uh, Russia. And so those ties are very strong. And so a lot of uh, equipment and fighters could be making their way into eastern Ukraine uh, just because of that relationship. Um, but I, like I say, I've done a video before about uh, uh, Russian involvement, arming uh, uh, arming these separatists and supporting them to a certain degree. But now I'm starting to have my doubts that there's even uh, that much uh, support. I think there's just a lot of people in Russia uh, who are, are willing to gravitate towards this cause in, in uh, eastern Ukraine. So uh, so anyway, and then we have these uh, photos of these four uh, confessing uh, Russian paratroopers that are being uh, flaunted all over the press and uh, hung up uh, by Kiev. And, and, and that story is also very gray. Uh, and, and then uh, another story that's come out recently is talking about specifically spotting T-72 tanks, and, and then that is the reason uh, why there's confirmation that there are Russian forces, because uh, the Ukrainians don't have this. But um, this uh, this doesn't necessarily hold water, because we've seen before, uh, there's been a lot of uh, military hardware spotted in the field that is generally uh, kind of a hodgepodge, and generally stuff confiscated from the Ukrainian uh, army by the separatists. And, in fact, there's a report of captured Ukrainian equipment from June 20th to August 15th. And uh, these are just all the items that are confiscated by the separatists from the 
Ukrainian forces that they're beating in the field. 65 T-64 tanks, 69 infantry fighting vehicles, 39 APCs, 2 rocket systems, 33 self-propelled guns, 10 howitzers, 32 heavy mortars, 18 anti-aircraft guns, and 124 miscellaneous vehicles. All of those are um, uh, confiscated from the Ukrainians uh, in the field. So that's uh, pretty staggering. And I, I did a video about the losses that uh, Ukrainian forces are taking in the field, uh, 1,600 killed uh, to uh, pretty much several dozen amongst uh, militant forces. Uh, of course, the civilians are taking the brunt of the casualties in the eastern provinces, but there's a huge amount of equipment that uh, you, uh, the separatists have managed to commandeer to the point where they have a pretty formidable uh, military. And, of course, they're far more motivated and uh, better trained than uh, the forces that uh, the Kiev government is putting in the field against them, and no wonder they're having these victories. And we have uh, fall and winter coming up, and if these uh, militant forces can manage to sustain, uh, they, they could very well uh, draw this uh, war out a little bit longer and bring the Ukraine uh, government, uh, Kiev government, uh, to a standstill. Um, and another reason why this uh, idea of a Russian invasion just doesn't make any sense is because it just strategically uh, doesn't make sense. Uh, Putin has had every opportunity, and uh, it, it just hasn't happened. And, and for him to just put some paltry forces into uh, uh, the Ukraine, uh, just as a token gesture, uh, just doesn't make sense strategically. Uh, if, if Putin was involved and Russia was involved in some sort of intervention in uh, Russia, in, I mean in uh, East Ukraine, it would have been with uh, overwhelming force and done very quickly. Um, so this uh, just, and it just, just doesn't fall in with all the other pieces of the puzzle either. Uh, Russia has refused to uh, recognize Luhansk and, and Donetsk regions. Uh, there's no official political support per se. Uh, and in fact, the uh, eastern uh, Ukraine regions were very disappointed in their uh, lack of support from Russia to a certain extent. Uh, Russia wanted the referendums postponed, and um, you know there's no, uh, certainly no official military support of rebels. And even if there is, uh, once again, this is a tactic that we see used by countries all over the world to protect their interests. And certainly, Russia would have uh, interests in this region, and uh, to to at the very least, uh, supply some arms to the rebels uh, would not be too much to ask. But and and, and the other thing is this whole concept of this new Russian imperial strategy, there's no evidence for that either. So this idea that all of Europe is now shaking because they fear a Russian invasion is, is a hyperbole and a fear-mongering at its worst. Uh, Russia has been remarkably restrained considering a lot of Russian, uh, uh, actual Russians, are being slaughtered in eastern Ukraine, particularly civilians. So the fact that the uh, Russians have been so as restrained as they have is quite remarkable. And uh, let's remember that uh, Ukraine is a failed state. They are broke, um, they are fanatical, and uh, we're getting nothing but lies. And that's one of the worst parts about this, is this media spectacle and these lies. And the Kiev government is corrupt and weak and failed and brutal. And yet we have the West uh, buying into this whole scenario they're trying to paint uh, to uh, get some geopolitical uh, opportunism here. So, I mean, here's one of the worst headlines, of course, USA Today, Russia outright lied, um, which is ridiculous considering all the lies coming out of Kiev, all the lies coming out of the United States government about this entire scenario, and uh, <laughs> just the irony of seeing a headline like that. And, uh, and then the whole idea that there's this uh, uh, spectrum of Russian propaganda out there when we see all the events uh, colored and carefully chosen, and if, if not marginalized for the most part, in a lot of the Western press. But we have day-to-day, minute-by-minute coverage, uh, certainly by Russia today, um, that regardless of uh, what kind of spin they put on it, you can see uh, certain things for yourself. And they've covered it quite well. And a lot of it is quite reliable, and, uh, as it would be in this situation. Each propaganda machine is providing you with information whether it comes from east or west, just because it's propaganda doesn't mean uh, you're not learning something. 
And then uh, to top it off, we have this uh, Kiev government posturing and uh, uh, pimping uh, with their military, military parade in downtown Kiev uh, when they have this uh, failed state and this failed war in a, in, a, in a world of lies, swimming in a world of lies. So, uh, boy, I'll, I'll eat my hat or I'll eat my black shirt. That will make a lot of people happy. Um, if it turns out there are actually Russian troops uh, into any in any degree in Ukraine, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's still no reason to uh, believe anything that comes out of the Kiev government. And uh, it seems uh, ridiculous to think there's any kind of uh, Russian force concentration uh, entering Ukraine at this point. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, this little uh, dog and pony show plays out. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.